this is Top Gamer 007 here. And before we get started, the VG Bulletin, the link to all news articles and timestamp is going to be in the description below. And let's get started. Let's move on to some rhyme news. The game developer talked about why Rhyme was delayed on the Nintendo Switch on its blog post. I will be talking about the most important parts of the quote because it's a really long quote that I'm going to be sharing with you today. If you want the full blog post, it's going to be in the description below. So let's get started, quote unquote. First, some history. The decision to go multi-platform was made a few months before it was announced last year. At that time, work was only underway on the PC and Xbox versions of the game. The Switch SKU have not been interactive developed. Work began in the earnest on the Switch SKU in August of 2016. Given that this was a new console, we made a bunch of educated guesses as to the work that would be involved porting it over to the new hardware. Some of these predictions turn out to be right and some of them turn out to be wrong. Unfortunately, we did not know that they were wrong until work has started to wrap up early this year. Right now, the team at Tandalus and Tequilius Works are busy optimizing shaders, fixing bugs, and getting the, raid, getting the game ready for submission to first party review. It takes about two months when all is said and done to actually get the game on store shelves after that point. If all goes well, this will be the last time you hear on us on this subject. To ensure the same narrative parity to the game, we built an achievement system into the game. Huh. This news tell me that the developers did not have the development kits at this time, August 2016. Sorry to say this, but I'm not gonna buy this game. This is not the point of me covering this. Uh, news i'm not gonna buy this game i already have it on switch i did not like it and i didn't have it on so i already have it on pc and i did not like it enough to buy it a second time like get it another time um but this tells me that not much developers had the switch development kits before launch and that's why it wasn't that as much third-party support at launch and of course they didn't trust nintendo because, well, they were it was too much changes. They didn't, they didn't want to go through the trouble of making guesses for the Switch. Gotta keep on changing the SKU the development kit, and and the developers were like, "Well, the Wii U failed. We don't have to deal with this hassle. We're just going to not make games until the final product is out and see the sales." And then they saw it, and then they said, "Well." The Switch is doing well now. We don't have to do that educating guesses to release at launch because we don't trust Nintendo at a point. And now Nintendo Switch is doing well. Now we're going to port our games there or make games for it. So this gives us a lot of insight at the time of making games on the Switch. Let's continue with Nintendo news. With Super Mario Odyssey is getting a official guide including a collector's edition. Prima is continuing its relationship with Nintendo for another big guide. For Super Mario Odyssey launch at the end of October, it will be accompanied by a new guide. The guide will come with two versions. Amazon lists a standard release as well as a collector's edition. The former is 320 pages and the paperback is while a ladder is 336 pages and a hardcover. In the terms of the guide's offer, that's a bit of a mystery right now. It's obviously is to include gameplay information and tips, but Amazon description hasn't updated. And, man, I cannot wait for Mario Odyssey, but I am not gonna get this official guide. I love playing my games blind without cheating. It's Guide again, guys. That's cheating. Just give you tips and stuff. That's that's like a cheating for me. If I ever get stuck, at, if the slim chance I get stuck in a game, because I if I ever get stuck is either RPG is not gonna be a platformer like Mario. 
Um, if I ever get stuck, I have the internet right there. But it's cool to give the, the people the options that love official guides for their collections. Let's move on to ARMS news. Nintendo offers a first blurry look at the new ARMS character. The teas are going up a notches with a new Twitter published on the Japanese ARM Twitter account. I'll be showing it on screen right now. The video that was shown, the GIF, I'll be showing it on screen right now. It gives a first look at the new fighter, but it's really blurry. It's pretty blurry, right? You can get a rough idea how the character is going to look. You can see it right now on screen, like I said before. This piqued my interest a lot. This must be a really good fighter if they're making all these teases and hyping it up like Overwatch or Doomfist or something. This is this is like here. I, I hope this is enough to make me play the game a lot again. Like I hope like I'll be going when this update comes, I'll be going in and playing it. But I hope this update made me stick a little bit longer than the Mask Brass update because that game uh Mass Brass update, I was still playing the game at the time, but Mass Brass just ruined it for me. Like, I don't know, as soon as that update came, I just stopped playing. Well, that's my opinion, but I would love to see if the update will make me start playing ARMS. And I hope this character is, this character is fun to play as. That's the most important part of this update. I hope it's a good character that's hard to master, but fun to play. Yeah, so let's move on to the last news of today. Oh my god, this is the saddest thing to say, man. It's hurt me like right, it hurts me. But Sonic Media is currently suffering from a couple of technical hiccups on the Switch. Multiple user experience issues while taking screenshots, accessing the home menu, and using the power button and the response time are either rather slow or completely non-existent. Kotaku said that the issue stems from playing in portable mode, but some players have reported encountering the same problems when the system is docked as well. The site adds that it isn't happening for everyone and can be intermittent. We'll be moving on to Sonic Mini also have a debug mode hidden and can be accessed by entering Mania mode and hovering over the no save icon on the right. You, you then need to press X to activate the options and debug mode should be the one of the options alongside a couple others. I told you guys in the last video the game could be different on each platform and reviews could change because of it. Um, I saw the Xbox version, I think I got an 82, I don't know why, but maybe Xbox players hate um, Sonic. But uh, Kotaku did say that not everyone having this problem. But personally, I have this problem. I have a problem. I have two problems. It does delay in docked and portable mode with going into home screen, um, taking screenshots. I checked this myself. And going into the quick settings, that's, man, that's crazy. I even have that. I don't even, if I'm going to turn off my switch, I don't use the home button. I press the button and I never really go to the home button, the home menu as much. So this was like a jarring thing. Like I never really go to the home menu. So this is new. And you know, this problem's these are really big problems and did, Sega did say they're going to fix this problem as well. And I also have another problem, a huge problem. Um, the game froze, like completely froze, I have to turn off the whole switch. It's Studiopolis Act 1, I think it was Act 1, the boss fight that you play Tetris spoilers on. But the boss fight is when you play Tetris against um, Eggman, so basically put your, put your Tetris right there. Uh, you, and it froze after I beat him for some reason. And the only way to leave the frozen, uh, the frozen screen is to turn off the game. Now yeah, turn off the, was to turn off the whole switch, and 
that's the that's like one of the few problems I have on the Switch. I didn't I don't know if it's a Switch problem or it's on the PS4 and Xbox One and it's like minor glitches and stuff and I know the Switch problem is the home menu, but I don't know. But uh But when I played it again, I just played the whole stage and it continued after I beat Eggman. So it wasn't a huge big deal. I was so scared that I'm gonna be stuck there. Gotta go call Nintendo support. <laughs> But it it's okay. After that, it was the only problem I have, like internally in the game. Um, the debug mode, uh, it was it's a cool addition because it's fun to see a game have this mode without a like Game Shark or a cheat code generator. But it's cool to have have it on consoles and more and more features the better, right? <laughs> oh my god. So, yes, it's about time to end my video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And I would love if you could subscribe to expand my channel and share the video if you think you could inform someone else. And comment below. I love to read good or bad comments and help me as improve as a YouTuber. So, this is Talking Gamer 7, and I see you in the next one. Peace.